Hey guys, it's Max. We're back with Battle Code 2015. In order to defeat the enemy headquarters, we're going to have to have a lot of units. And in order to build a lot of units, we'll need a lot of ore. Let's start by making the beaver move around. I'll define a variable called facing. This is the direction that the robot is facing. We'll have him try to move in that direction. We'll also make it possible for the direction he's facing to change occasionally. Math.random returns a number from 0 to 1. If we check whether it's less than 0 0.5, it's saying there's a 1 in 20 chance of something happening. Half that time, we'll make the facing direction turn one way. Facing equals facing dot rotate left. Note that that's a 45 degree turn. And the other half of the time, we'll make it turn right. Let's see what this does. I mean open git bash. For me, this is my command line. I'll go to the release folder and type ant run. We expect them each to follow a different random path. It'll have some continuity, but uh, occasionally it'll make turns. But what we find is that they're all following the same random path. The reason is that they all use the same random seed, and they're each initialized with the same conditions. This is a function of how each, co each robot runs an independent copy of the code. In order to make the independent copies unique, we'll have to refer to something unique about each robot. Also, we'll have to define a random object. Then we'll use this random object to get new random numbers that are different for each robot. We'll import random from java.util. And we'll define rand equals new random and give it a seed. The seed will be rc.getID. The robot's ID is unique for each robot. That'll make each robot have a different set of random numbers. Then instead of math.random, we'll type rand.nextdouble. It gives us the same kind of number from 0 to 1, but now it'll depend on the robot's ID. Let's see how that looks. We should see robots moving in different directions. And sure enough, they do. Perfect. Now we need them to start mining minerals. Also, it might be a good idea to randomize the direction they start out facing, so that it doesn't have a preference toward north. Let's set facing equals direction.values and get a number from 0 to 7. To do that, we'll use rand.nextdouble and multiply it by 8. It gives a number from 0 to 1, but it doesn't include 1. When we cast to integer, it always rounds down, so this gives us a number from 0 to 7, which indexes the array which has 8 values, the 8 different directions. I'll save that, and it'll have a random starting direction for which way it's facing. I'll delete this definition to avoid confusion. I'll put a comment, randomize starting direction. If the beaver sees minerals below it, it's a good thing to go ahead and mine. Otherwise, it would be good to move around. So we'll say if rc.senseOr at rc.getLocation, if that's greater than, say, 1, then we should mine. But wait, we can't just go ahead and mine. We have to do delays and checks. So we can see that mine requires these two things, is core ready and can mine. So I'll go ahead and check those. If rc dot is core ready and rc dot can mine. 
if those two things are satisfied, we can go ahead and mine. Otherwise, if there's no ore, we should go around and look for something. For, for now, we'll just have our robot walk around to look for ore, though it is possible for him to sense ore at other locations before going there. Now we should see the robots stop occasionally to mine ore. In fact, they should be stopped most of the time, and we should see the ore deplete on the map. In the previous video, there was no ore on the map because we had not yet finished the client. But in this video, there is ore. And you can see that uh, if you have extremely good vision, these gray squares are disappearing and leaving just the grass tiles behind. Some visual changes to the client should be expected. So we're collecting ore, and you can see that our ore count is actually going up faster than the opponent's. Something about randomly going around is more efficient than the opponent's ore collection strategy, where a lot of the units are piled up behind and unable to mine. One of the problems we're seeing is that our robots are getting stuck at the edge of the map. Let's fix that. The movement code may be shared among several robots, so it might be sensible for us to make that its own method. To do that, I'll cut it here, and I'll type a new method name called something like move around. I can call it whatever I want. Then I'll highlight this and allow it to create the method. I could just as easily have typed this out. Then I'll paste what I have. It wants RC to be available because it's not defined in this context. The way I'll work that is I'll just define it up top. Static robot controller RC. I'll change the name of this one and set RC equals my RC. This has something to do with the context of variables. I won't go into it in detail. Here, rc.move is underlined, and it says it wants us to add a throws declaration. This allows this method to pass an exception back to this method. If you don't understand it, don't worry. Just put it in. OK, this will produce the same result now as what we had before. All I've done is move the code that was here into this separate method. But now I would like to check that we're not facing off the edge of the map. If we are facing off the edge of the map, it would be a good idea to start turning in one direction or another. That way we don't stay facing the edge of the map. So we'll check the tile in front of us. If tile at rc.getLocation.addFacing, so this will be the tile in front of us. If that is terraintile.offMap, or in fact if it's void as well, then we'll need to start turning. So let's say if it's not terrain tile dot normal. If it's not a traversable terrain tile, although this code only makes sense for ground units and not for the drone which flies, then we'll have to start turning. For simplicity's sake, I'll only turn left, rather than randomly choosing between left and right turning. It might make sense in some cases to do this in a loop, because you may need to rotate left multiple times to get to a direction that isn't facing toward a void. We'll leave that for another time. We'll see what kind of result this produces. We should see robots approach the edge of the map and then turn away from it. Same thing for voids. If they're getting near a void and they are facing the void, they should turn away and continue moving in another direction. OK, this guy, for example, is looking at the edge. Ah, and he's turned. And he's turned to the left. This will create somewhat of a bias where our robots will tend to turn to the left. There are some robots hidden off the bottom edge of the screen. I'll just scroll that down. So in general, we'll get robots moving around and to the right in a counterclockwise uh, fashion. OK, this is pretty effective. However, these Furbies are not the most effective units when it comes to producing 
uh, minerals because they can only be built at a certain rate. We'd be better off building miner factories. That'll be the subject of the next video. Hope this helps. Bye.